we're not doing that bit anymore. We did 70 episodes and I have nothing to think about anymore. Okay. Stop playing with your trained caterpillar. <laughs> Looks so good. Looks so good. Listen, any, the only people that should be twirling their mustache is guys that have mustache like a walrus. Well, it takes time to grow. I don't, th I don't think, I think you can give yours 10 years and it's still not going to look like a walrus. Okay. Stop being a hater. Why are you being such a hater? <laughs> All right, guys, welcome to episode uh, 71. Is it 71, Mike? Yes. Yeah. Season 3, episode 11. Tomorrow, make sure you tune in tomorrow because tomorrow I will attempt to shave Enrique's mustache. <laughs> I might put my knee on his neck, my <laughs> other hand on the side, and I'm going to be shaving. Hopefully, I will cut his lip. <laughs> Anyways, guys, today we have two topics that we're going to address. And I believe we might have time for other questions. So start asking. Uh, the two things we're going to go over is from Lukash Yanda from Czech Republic. He asked me, what is my defense against uh, bread cutter slash paper cutter choke? Um, and send me a video of, I forget who the guy was, who showed a very beautiful escape. However, I don't think anybody would bread cut or choke you like that. Um, so the escape was from the bottom. And the guy sprawled. Guys, how many of you sprawl in your bread cutter choke? I want to know who sprawls. I'm not saying it's wrong, but I personally wouldn't do it this way. Guys, just like we learned in uh, uh, with the Dars and the bread cutter choke, okay? You don't sprawl. Where does your weight go when you sprawl? Your weight goes in the floor. So now you're depending all, it's, it's all uh, arm strength, okay? It's easy to escape like this. I can, I can pull this over. I can take his back. Lay down for me for a second. So guys, when I bread cutter people, I don't sprawl. I want to get his, my arm underneath my torso. I'm not sprawling. Anytime somebody sprawls on a dars or bread cutter or slash paper cutter choke, where is the weight go, guys? If I sprawl, where is my weight going? How am I going to choke him? It's easy for him to escape. It's the same thing with a with a dars. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> where's, where's the weight go? <laughs> where's the weight go? It goes into your hips, into the floor. Anytime if, if I'm doing a dose, I want my chest on top of that arm. If I'm doing a bread cutter choke, I will lean away and I will, I will lean on in. Okay? I want my weight on that arm. So obviously, if you do it, I'm not saying the other way is wrong. This one okay. is more better. But this one is more better. Okay? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so now let's look at some escapes. What happens if the guy does it more better? So, so guys, anytime I feel his hand, in this case, it's his right arm is going under my, under my uh, uh, arm. I want to make sure that I weave my hand through. So now, even if he does get the grip, it's going to be hard for him to bring that arm down. So that's the first thing I will do. So anytime, if I feel somebody just weaving, I'm going to weave right away. This is my first, and not just this, guys, but notice what I'm doing with my hips. I don't just weave my hand through. I get my hips up high to so now he's kind of almost floating on top of me rather than bringing his weight down, okay? 
So I will do two things, this, and now I start to change the angle. I'd rather go north-south. All right? And start to try to escape from here. You know? Maybe. Okay. Uh, guys, again, uh, we, we talked about this. There was a question on north-south. Uh, baseball bat choke. If you're north-south, there's other... If you're on top, there's other other attacks. Uh, usually, the, set, the, the you may finish north-south, but usually the baseball bat uh, choke is set up from uh, from uh, top of side control. Um, so let's look at it again. So, you know, Enrique, as soon as I feel him weaving, I want to get my head, so I want to get my arm underneath his arm, bring my hips up high, and I'm going to start to line up with him. Okay? Now, I'm going to try to flip the arm, if he's leaning towards his, his uh, uh, left, left. <laughs> I'm going to arch and try to get on top. From here, I will attack immediately. Okay? Now, what happens if you are caught sleeping and you actually, um, he managed to cinch it in? Yeah, this is, guys, this is rough already. You're already, uh, first of all, I want to turn my head to him because if I'm facing to the ceiling, he's crushing your trachea. So not only do you have the choke, but also there's pain. I'm going to try to arch high. Now, I'd like to get my right leg in if I can. Right now, he will back away because if he doesn't, I'm throwing the leg over. Okay. So anytime, if you can get your right shin in, so I'm gonna, and I'm looking to, that. Usually, people will not go with that. Usually what happens is, when I arch, these, he start, you know, we, we, we now fight for the guard. It doesn't matter, even if I wind up back on the bottom, at least now, I am not being choked. Okay? Do we have any questions on this so far? Uh, people replied to your question as to who sprawls on the bread cutter, and everybody says, not I. Good, guys. That means you either were doing it the more better way before, or you have learned in the last 71 episodes, 70. And a lot of peers asking, how do you deal when you're on top of side control and the opponent hunkers himself and turns his back to you? Do you know? Mm -hmm. Like some people don't have to do it right. Yes. Go ahead. Is this it a lot? Waiting for the confirmation. <laughs> Why this is being confirmed, we go with this. It says yes. Enrique is sometimes right. <laughs> <laughs> Hashtag. <laughs> At least 30%. <laughs> <laughs> right 30%. So again, the guy hunkers down. Push. So push. Gift wrap his ass. Now I'm going to slide my knee close to his head. Sit back. And now I will... Pick him up. All right, guys, your choice of submission that Enrique gets gets put away. There's a couple of things I possibly have. Charlie Human on YouTube says wrist lock. 
<laughs> He's going at the top of the list. <laughs> Does that answer your question when somebody hunkers down? Plow him more into, so if he's hunkered down slightly away, turn him a little bit more away, trap, trap his arm, the top one, at the wrist, and then you just start to break him apart. All right, and, so. And Steve Rogola is asking, how do you deal with your opponent tucking their chin during the paper cover? So again, one of the reasons, so when I go for paper cutter, I will weave my bottom hand first, grab the collar. Now, I'm gonna grab on top, and what I'm gonna do now is I push into him, tuck your chin in. So I lean away from him while he's still carrying my weight. So I lean away from him, and then come back and bring my guys again. I want my body weight on top of my arm. I know I look huge, but I don't try to rely on my strength. I try to rely on the most efficient deployment of my body weight. Just like when we choke people, we don't choke them with our arms, we choke them with our whole torso. In the case of a Darce, in the case of a, a bread cutter choke, we, give me the other side so they can see from the other side. Other side. This side. Okay. Uh, I lost my chair of thought now. <laughs> For that, I shaved half your mustache. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so when I weave in, guys, look at look what I do. So as I as I'm at, you know I want to attack, and I I get my se uh, second hand in. Okay. So my right hand is four fingers in. My left hand is thumb in. I see him tuck his chin in. When he does that, guys, I will push towards his push towards his hips, bring my left elbow in, and then I just bring my body weight on top. Okay? Let's turn the other way so they can see it again one more time. All right? So when you pressure somebody closer to his hips, it tends to bring up, bring his head up. So as my hand, so, so I, I got the connection, I got the grips that I want. He's tucking his chin in. This brings his head up. I get my forearm on his neck. So even if he's tucked in, I may actually pull him just a little bit. And then I just bring my torso on top of him. Okay. And Iron Republic on YouTube says, Carl just wanted to say how transformative your armbar stuff with Firal Sahabi and your content on YouTube has helped my armbar game over the past few years. I rewatch them every few months. Nice. Guys, stay tuned. There's more coming on that. Uh, so, uh, guys, don't forget, speaking of armbars, should the the uh, red card choke fail, you always have the armbar thing same side armbar available you know so so if, if he starts to yeah this is it's, it's just an easy transition all right so uh, again guys so if you practicing defense against a, a paper cutter slash uh, bread cutter choke practice it against the guy that tries to put his weight on because that's the hard one that's that's the part that you if the guy sprawls, he's gonna be his head is gonna be so light you could just punch him in the head a little bit, make it look like a push. <laughs> First say what is wrong with you, and then escape. All right, just kidding. Only only with really good and friendly training partners can you trash talk. Um, guys, so let's look at another question. There was another question, and it was related to an X pass. Uh, it was uh, I think posted like some of you guys I know can watch it live by the way we're migrating to YouTube starting next week guys episode 75 
If you want to tune in live, you have questions, it will be on YouTube, okay? So subscribe to the channel um, because everybody has YouTube, okay? We will still post links on, uh, on Facebook. We will still post links on Instagram, and that's gonna, it's going to stay on YouTube so you can watch it after. So, but I, I, you know, I still go through the questions even if you don't watch the episode live. And there was a question, um, I believe Saad couldn't, couldn't watch it uh, live, so he had a question uh, on X, uh, what is the counter to an X-Pass? Guys, it's, it's the same thing as a tor uh, you know, bullfight or a Toriando pass. So if I feel him, I will control that hand. I know some of you guys posted video of a guy t having his back taken in competition. But he did this. That's what he did. Very simple. Guys, the difference between you jamming his, his hand to your feet and even have it halfway up, he can, it's not a lot of power. It's just the direction, it's just the angle. Suddenly that back pay becomes possible. Try to step over. Yeah, he could step over, but I'm just gonna drive. All right, so when you do that, guys, could thumb down and drive to your feet. So X guard pass defense is very similar. Yeah, I will not just sit here. I'm doing that just for the benefit of of of, of, of the episode. But normally, I'd be I'd be sort of, you know, now I would I would engage him. You know, on, on some terms, as soon as you sw guys again, you buy, you know this at this point. Even if you're not my live student, uh, if you're a virtual student, <laughs> uh, you know as soon as you squash his attack, you go after him. Do not allow him to go, you know, to recover and go for a secondary attack. Okay. Now let's look at it. What happens if I'm too late? And he just, he just drops in on my, he drops in. This is still valuable, guys. I would still hold on to it, try to get some grip, off balance him, all right? Which way are you gonna go? Yeah. Oh yeah. And we gotta scramble, guys. <laughs> 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 Yes, guys, this is what training in water does to you. <laughs> Not what Enrique is doing, what I'm doing to him. <laughs> Eric Darnstead says 911 on speed dial. <laughs> Thank you. You're learning the good list. <laughs> and a question from Legacy Channel is Professor, with the arm bar, my opponent is pulling his elbow out. When I transition from the joystick grip to the shotgun grip, any pointers? Um, uh, the only way I would switch grips from the joystick grip to the shotgun grip is you have to get the guy stuck there. You understand what I'm saying? Meaning that he can twist to the left or twist to the right. I got my directions wrong, but it doesn't matter. You guys get the point. So he can twist to the left, he can twist to the right, but he cannot escape, okay? If you try to switch it too late, meaning that if he has too much movement, do not switch your grip. Utilize it for some, something else. So you just lay down for me, bottom cross side. So, so Enrique is going to start twisting around a little bit. So I would switch here because he's not giving it a full escape option, okay? He's kind of twisting left, right. He can't really go too far. I, 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 then you can switch. Then you can switch. Now, suppose he basically just, this, you, would not, you could not switch here. It's too late. Okay, now go with the other way. Pull your arm up. If that's the case, guys, disengage. 
take something else what he's giving you, okay? So if, if your opponent is doing a really good job escaping, you basically bail out on that attack and take what else he's giving you because if you stick with a failing attack, very low probability you're gonna finish it, high probability you're gonna, if you stick with it too long, you're gonna wind up in a bad position, a worse position than you were. So again, very fine line, start thinking, okay, I'm losing him. While he's still battling that submission or that position, let me move on to something else on my terms. He says, okay, I'm still kind of sitting up a little bit, so on my back is the best time. Uh, well, you have to sit up for... Uh, uh, if you're sitting up, you should not be thinking joystick grip. If you're sitting up, the joystick grip is is fairly useless. Does that make sense? If you're sitting up, you should be either, you know, pinning his arm to your chest and uh, planning to go down, or weaving in for the shotgun grip. You understand what I'm saying? So the 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 the. Shotgun, uh, the joystick grip is good when you basically already decided to go for the arm lock, you're fully extended. You need to just kind of change the angle really quickly. If you're sitting up, this will do almost nothing. There's just two, you can move from left to right quite a long distance. So if I'm laying down, this, this can stop him, very little movement. If I'm sitting up and I'm twisting his arms, you know, even movement from here to here is not quite going to stop him from escaping. So I would not use, so what I think you need to do based on what you're telling me is start with this grip and if, you, if you're sitting up, change to the shotgun grip. The joystick grip tends to be sort of when you're you know, uh, on, your, on the ground usually and you have to make quick adjustments but they're relatively minor. He says, ah yes, it does make much sense. Thank you Good. so much. I'm glad I'm making sense guys. <laughs> and yes. Ryan D'Souza is asking, Coach, on your side control video with Viros, you said that when someone hunkers down on your hips, you could bridge into them and do an inverted triangle. Would you mind showing how? Is Viros sitting on my hips? On side control? On side control? Um, let me see. I'm not quite sure what, you know, I did that video like, I don't know, three years ago. <laughs> so I don't quite remember it. <laughs> Yeah, when I, yeah, I bump up, usually I will try to do it faster. I turn and I can push him down. So usually I want him kind of low. Sometimes, if, especially if the guy, yeah, if, if, the guy, if the guy is low and has his arm between my legs, I will almost always do it. Uh, if he's low and he has, has uh, I will try to get him to at least put his hand across my, my upper leg. Um, I want to get his elbows between my legs. So what I need to do now is I'm going to bump up, turn. And as I'm turning, I'm already pushing him down. All right? Now I will continue to turn further. All right? So, you know, again, with, uh, with escaping bottom across side, I usually want the guy on my shoulders or on my hip. Uh, we talked about it in one of the episodes. I forget which one. Because if I, he's on my hips, I can bump him up. If he's on my shoulders, um, the bumping will not do anything, but I can also move my legs, move my hips, because he's only controlling my shoulders, not the rest of my body. Does that make sense? I, I hope I answered your question. I don't, like I said, I, we made that video three years ago. Uh, I think it hit like 400,000. But uh, I don't remember exactly what, what I said on that video. <laughs> he says, uh, yes, that's what I was asking. Thank you. And also, are you holding on to Enrique's thigh? No. No. Guys, when you're on the bottom, you don't want to be necessarily holding on to the guy. You, you want to get him away. That's, some, that's, that's a mistake that a lot of beginners tend to do is the guy's coming on top of cross side. Let me hold on to him. Um, I don't want to hold on to him. I want to 
I want to get rid of him. Uh, so the only way I would hold on to it is if I have his arm tied up and I'm going to bust out, but that's only a, a brief hold. Usually, so let's do it from the other side. So again, he, I, I start to flare out my leg. So if I see this, you know, so now I'm going to bust and I'm pushing him away. I punch my right leg through. Now, once I have him, once I have him tied up, now I want to hold on to him. Now he, I'm no longer trying to escape. Now I want to pre prevent him from escaping. So now, once I'm in a position to put him away, then I will hold on to him. Until then, I, I want to just kind of bump him away. You know, worst case scenario, guys, the guy postures up and backs away, which is okay because, um, uh, you know, you, you regain guard. So that's not a complete disaster. And Charlie on YouTube is asking, how do you deal when uh, the uke is bigger than you and trying to bridge up using his strength to reverse your side control? It depends. <laughs> if I'm trying to show my dominance, <laughs> I will just straighten out my leg, make me make him feel my leg, my uh, my, my power. So go, go ahead, come on. <laughs> <laughs> I will only do that when I'm having fun. If I'm trying to to win, so. Uh, you know, I feel the guy. I go across. I go across. Again, I will not hold because the guy is way bigger than me. So anytime I feel the guy, so that I, I start to feel him. Immediately, I'm like, yeah, yeah I'm going into it. I'm not going to stop, you know. with it depends how much bigger, you know. To me, bigger is more than 20 pounds. 20 pounds is a rounding error. But, uh. So if, if the guy is, you know, 80 pounds heavier, especially, you know, the guys that have thinner waist and big, like just broad shoulders, big legs, uh, they're easier, believe it or not, they're easier to control than if the guy's kind of barrel chested because they can just roll. So especially if I, you know, the hardest guy to keep down is, is somebody that's, that's barrel chested. So if you have somebody that pretend to be barrel chested, pop out. So if I got so, so if I get top of cross side and on a barrel chest you guy, so I'm cross side, go. I don't even I don't even wait, I move. You know, whatever he gives me, I move. This is a this is an arm break. I, I move. I don't give him a chance to settle down, I don't get a chance to to uh, to get his his grips, you know. Uh, I will move, I will attack. And then if he's reacting to my attacks, he has to constantly change his arms, protect his neck. And something in that movement will open up where I can take the arm, I can take his neck. But it's, yeah, you should be very careful hunkering down, you know. Same thing when you, when you mount it on somebody that's got like a barrel chested uh, build. Man, you, you know, even if your mount is good. So if I'm here, yeah, I, you know, this is good. I will, I will move, I will move. I will, I will not even, let it get to a point where it's questionable. Okay? Uh, where it's questionable is, is by then you've lost it. If you, you have a 50-50 chance uh, to, for it to go your way and 50-50 chance for it to go his way, you waited too long. You, 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 you missed an opportunity before that. Usually when, you, when your chances of success is 50-50, that's that's pretty bad. You, should, you need to improve those odds. Andy Anderson on YouTube is... What's up, Andy? Asking, not sure if you already went over this, but can you go over your guillotine from top, head, and arm, cross-side control? Top, head, and arm. The one-headed guillotine? Okay. Yeah, we got two minutes. Let's do it real quick. So guys, if I go for a guillotine, right, and Rika flops, my first attack is going to be trying to um, try to
trying to anaconda him. But if he doesn't, what I'll do is I'll try to hip hunch. If that fails, so as he's driving me back down, I will get an underhook. So if I can hip hunch all the way, all the way on top, I will. Okay? But sometimes you, it's not happening, so I will get an underhook. I will drive him to the floor. As I'm doing that, guys, I'm make, sorry, I'm trying not to put my hips on, the, on your head. So guys, I'm gonna make my hand flat, and I want it to go deep, and now I'm just gonna put my, guys, again, I'm not pulling, I'm compressing. Shoulder forward, shoulder forward. He said, uh, yes, that was it. I believe I taught that in seminar in Pittsburgh. I know you were there. But it is, so as I'm deciding to get on top, I will make my hand from, from this to flat and higher. And then I don't pull, I compress. So my whole torso comes up, comes down rather. Shoulder forward, guys, critical. And one last question before we close up. Uh, Ryan D'Souza on YouTube is asking, I've been trying to practice the back set from episode 24 on a dummy, but I keep losing balance. I don't know what I am doing wrong. How skilled is that dummy? <laughs> you might be rushing it. That's what I suspect you're doing. Guys, if you're one of my students, what do I say all the time? Do not rush. You can do it at snail's pace. You can do it super slow. And because if you do it fast and wrong, you will always do it wrong. So go real slow. The dummy's go, go, going nowhere. So if I'm backstepping, by the way, if you lose your balance, make sure you sit on the dummy. Okay? So if you lose your balance, this is okay. This is not okay. This is not okay. All right. So, but the, the key to doing something, learning something, very few people can do things fast right away. I'm certainly not one of those people. Told you, I'm not talented. So if you don't know, if you're learning a new movement, all right, do it slow. Are we doing this? <laughs> no, no, no. Sorry. I hope your dummy doesn't do what mine does. So, do it slow. You do it slow a hundred times, do it fast. <laughs> yeah, that's for, that's for. For what? <laughs> All right. So do it slow, do it slow, do it slow, do it slow a hundred times. When you stop losing your balance, doing it slow. Do it medium paced. Then do it fast. That's how you build sort of a new skill. You know, nobody, you know, gymnasts, I'm pretty sure they, you know, the first or second day they hop on that high beam. I'm pretty sure they're falling off. So do it slow. Take your time. Make sure you're, 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 you're doing it properly. And slowly speed it up. Don't forget, Rome was built, not built in a day, guys. And on that note, guys, we're out of time. See you tomorrow, episode 72. Yes. Like, share, subscribe. I know, Mike. Like, share, subscribe, tag, friend, follow. follow. Yeah. See you tomorrow, guys. Stay well and be nice to others.